The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the September 13th, fantastic Friday the 13th edition of today's opening bell on The Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that's what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools, and it is Friday the 13th. It's Happy Friday the 13th. So today's tool is the secret to being happy. Now, these are four words that you want to be able to write down on a pad of paper or maybe just put it in your memo pad. These are very key words. They are potential, action, results, and belief. Why? Because happiness, well, first of all, happiness boils down to becoming happy about who it is you've become, who it is that you have become in life. And each of us, folks, each of us are controlled by our primary question in life. You see, each of us has a primary question, whether we know it or not. The key is, I believe, you must know what your primary question is. That's where it all starts, because it literally controls your life. Your driving force in life is a result of that primary question, which means it can either be empowering, which is what I hope it is, or it could be disempowering for many their primary disempowering question, which is what is controlling their life, is the following. It's what's wrong with me or why am I not love? Most questions can be categorized or summarized into those two areas. The fear associated with not being enough or not being loved. Those two types of primary questions, you know what? They stop you dead in your tracks. They stop you from taking the action needed in order to move forward. The actions needed to living in a happy state of mind. My primary question, just in case you asked, it's real simple. It's an empowering primary question, and it goes like this. How can I be the intelligence behind financial freedom? It is the driving force behind everything that I share with you each morning. Happiness boils down to being happy about who you've become. I'm a very happy person. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't live a golden life. It doesn't mean that I have no troubles. It doesn't mean that I don't have to deal with the same type of circumstances that happen to each of you. Circumstances happen to each of us. So maybe you ask that question, how does one motivate themselves when the world throws you a curveball? Because if it hasn't lately, guess what? It most certainly will. And motivation, that's something that each of us must be able to find. We've got to dig down. Motivation will occur the moment that you recognize your potential. If you're trying to motivate someone, all you need to do is show them their potential. Question, if I found a trade that had a 10 to 1 reward to risk versus a 3 to 1 reward to risk, which one would you take? Which one would motivate you? Now, most out there, they'd say 10 to 1. And the reason? Because there's more potential. It really is as simple as that, folks. Therefore, you must always first start with identifying your potential. That's what we do each day when we trade these markets. So that's most certainly what you should be doing when you're trading these markets. Identify your potential. So if you're not happy with your physical self, your, your weight, your strength, your health, focus on your potential first. What does that potential look like? If you're not happy with your finances, your career, your job, your trading and investing, focus on your potential. What does that look like? If you're not happy with your relationships, your boss, your coworkers, your friends, your family, your other half, focus on your potential. What does that look like? The truth is, and you know this, you have way more potential than you give yourself credit for. Even if you give yourself credit for a lot of potential, guess what? There's always more. These are the laws of life. It begins with potential, and then you'll take action. And I hope what you'll do is you'll take max, massive action, and that will produce a result, and then you'll have a belief. And you want to talk about massive action, massive potential, results, and belief? Let's go take a look at our TFNN virtual trading competition stars. Those are the real stars out there. Coming out from the pack yesterday, we have W. Bassioni. I don't know if I got that right. I sure hope I did. Thus far, he's made a profit of 44954 in trade in four trading sessions. 
You've got N. Gill. He's several lengths back. He or she, I should say, is several lengths back as we enter the home stretch. Today is the home stretch out there. Uh, kind of neck and neck here with N. Gill. We've got W. Barr, R. Hintzman, as, uh, and uh, D. Vale. That's our top five group out there. And maybe somebody's going to come from out of the pack today. Make sure you are placing your trades. We also had five winners yesterday, as we have for the past three days as well. Prior to that, we have J. Stirrer. One hundred bucks. R. Coletta, a hundred dollars. K. Latham, a hundred bucks. M. Aviles, Aviles, one hundred dollars. And D. Hinton out there, folks. If you would like to put a hundred dollars in your pocket and you participating in our ten thousand dollar TFNN virtual trading competition, just go to your system, place a trade today. All the winners are going to be announced uh, today during uh, Tom's show at uh, at least with regard to our hundred dollar winners out there. So, uh, and thank you to everybody that is participating, as well as everybody that is inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Now let's go check out these uh, markets out here right now. I guess i got to put that screen up here. We've got the uh, Dow futures up about 22 points. They're trading out at 15, 335. S&P futures up a half a point at 16. Yeah, i got the wrong contract up here on both of them, on all of these. I've got to change that, boy, contract rollover. Let's take a look at the uh, U.S. dollar index. That's off about three pennies. Uh, not a lot of movement here in the uh, currency market, but I did give you a trade yesterday for those of you that were uh, listening in, and we're going to go take a look at that. That was the euro U.S. dollar. We took a look at a three-drive to a bottom pattern. So if you're wondering what that looks like, well, that was a trade we gave away on the air, so we'll take a look at that. Goldilocks is back. Uh, Goldilocks is back, uh, 14 bucks. Got to put uh, one of those charts up. My charts are up. Uh-oh. So if you guys aren't seeing my charts, uh, let me uh, give me a minute here. Don't know why I didn't get that earlier. Uh, I got Al's typing in. So we've got uh, gold is back, 13 bucks. Silver is off 27 cents right now. Light sweet crude is down 93. I'll work through whatever technical glitch. Yeah, we got multiple charts. Exactly. Okay, good. So we're good to go here on our uh, chart system. We take a quick peek over around the uh, globe, over in Europe right now. The FTSE is off 18 bucks. It ran into some resistance. We'll go ahead and put that uh, chart up on the screen because that was in a descending price channel out there, and that ran right into resistance. So we'll see if that is going to uh, break out or breakdown. The DAX is up 10 points right now. Over in Asia last night, somewhat of a mixed bag. Yeah, the Nikkei up 17 points. No big deal, about one-tenth of a percent. Biggest mover was the uh, Shanghai. That was off 20 points, which was down about nine-tenths of a percent. The Hang Seng was uh, off 38 points, just kind of a blip, uh, just under two-tenths of a percent out there. Our call number is 877-927-6648. Uh, let's take a look. Here is the, uh, what do we want? let's go start with Goldilocks. We must start with gold and silver, the bigger movers in the uh, market here this morning. Now, the chart that I've got on my screen, if you're following us on Tiger TV, thanks so much for doing that. Maybe you are watching in in the Tiger's Den. I hope you are because you can see these charts in HD, and that way you'll be able to more easily read the expansions and contractions of swing points. We pointed these out uh, yesterday, and what we suggested, and you know, we, we, we hit this thing really right on the uh, button, that uh, gold should find support at that 1304-ish level. And why did we take a look at that? Well, number one, we took a look at an expansion of a set of swing points. The set of swing points we're looking at, the low of August 22nd, 1354.50, all the way up to the high on August 28th out there at 1434. That's your two most recent swing points, and we found an expansion, a 1.618 expansion, completed right at about the 1304 level. What we also did was we went back to the more recent swing point low from August 7th. That low is 1271.80. We're going to use that, and we're always going to be using the swing point high as our measurement uh, device right now, August 28th. So I don't have to keep repeating that uh, to you. So we're going to go up to that swing point high, and what we'll see is that a .786 retracement was also occurring right at the 1.618 expansion. And if we go back just a tad further, if we go back to this uh, swing point right here from July 5th, which is a little bit uh, a little bit uh, above the uh, July, uh, June 28th uh, swing point, what you'll see here is you will also see that we're at a .618 retracement level. That was in the 1293-ish range out there. So you've got some very nice Fibonacci support out there. Now, it just depends on on how aggressive of a trader you are as to whether or not you would go ahead and take that trade. But that's an error because 
these points, folks, they are used to identify areas, logical areas of support and resistance. What I like to see, I like to see confirmation out here. I want to see the mere fact that the market is going to turn. So it has hit an important support level. If, in fact, this fails, what will likely occur? Well, what we should see, we should see a move down to the most recent swing point low, the most significant swing point low. That would be your August 7th area. That would be somewhere between 1271.80 and 12.89 out there. So we'll see if this area here, 1304-ish, is going to hold out there. I would say today, well, I can't really say, I can't say today. I need to see the uh, candle form out here. I would think that the uh, better move, I can tell you what the better move would be, is that really Goldilocks and Silver just kind of trade right around this area right now. They don't try to move higher. They don't try to move too much lower. And then we come into uh, work Sunday evening. Monday morning, and uh, what we see is we see a close above 1330.80. That then would signal a, a buy. But that's right now. Those numbers will change depending on how this market trades today. So that's Goldilocks. That's why price stopped where it did out there. It just depends on how aggressive of a trader you are. Now, if we go take a look at high ho silver out here, what we will see is silver has made the point six one eight retracement. We're clearly coming off of the same swing points. August the 7th out here. Let me make sure it's the exact swing points as we measure those uh, numbers. We'll put these side by side. Well, I'll try to put these side by side. Yeah, i got to do that in about 10 seconds' time. Let me see. So we're taking a look at August August the 7th. We most certainly are. So take a look at gold made a .786 retracement, and silver here has only made a .618 retracement. Which of these two is stronger? That's right. It's high-ho silver. We'll see if this area here will also hold. 877 927 We'll be right back, folks. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN is having an open house in the Tiger's Den for two weeks, and the best part is that everyone is invited and you just have to be a member at TFNN. The open house in the Tiger's Den has already begun and will last through our week-long virtual trading competition, which ends September 13th. Use this time to exchange trading ideas with other traders in the virtual chat room and to discuss trading strategy. For all the information and to take part in the Tiger's Den open house, log on to TFNN.com today. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. 
patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Had a request earlier this morning in the uh, den to take a look at the S&P 500, and specifically the question was about the dark cloud cover candle that uh, formed yesterday in the S&P 500. That is, uh, give me a second here, we're looking at the S&P 500 right now. That is this candle that formed here yesterday. Now, a dark cloud cover candle, just as, and that's uh, the, how the Japanese uh, named it, uh, you know, it uh, suggests just like if you were to look out your window and see some dark clouds, uh, maybe you've got a little bit of a storm, that is on the horizon. That's really what it represents. And it's great because candlesticks are always going to help you understand how to read the message of the markets. You know, what is the current forecast? But, you know, if you live here in Florida, what you would know is that these uh, storms, they can blow by pretty quickly out there. And that's the way that I take a look at it right now. I'd say it is a reversal signal, but out of five uh, single or double candle, I should say double candle reversal signals out there, it would be number two of five, with uh, five being the strongest and two and one being the weakest out here. So it means you need to pay attention to it. Now, what it was running into, what the S&P 500 did yesterday, uh, was it closed back below the uh, gap, the August 14th low out there, which is 1684.83. We had a close of 1683.42. So not exactly with conviction out here. The prior day broke through that uh, resistance area. Uh, and now what we're going to try to find out is, Where's the next area of support if the market does pull back? And what we've got out here is we have a little bit of a gap between the September 9th high, which was 1672.40, and the low from 16 uh, from September the 10th, which is 1674.32 out there. So it's going to be very important to be paying attention if, in fact, the S&P goes ahead and pushes down. What happens at that logical area of support? Now, there's some resistance overhead. And that resistance overhead could either be the... The uh, May 22nd bar, that is a bearish engulfing uh, candle. But I think more important for us to be taking a look at from a resistance standpoint on the S&P 500 is going to be this number, and that's going to be the July 23rd high. That's 1698.78. That's a bearish engulfing candle. It has some additional follow-through on that next session because if the market can close above 1698.78, that is suggesting that the market wants to break out and that it not only wants to test the highs, from August 2nd, which are 1709.67, but that they may break out above that area. And that's where we've got some logical lines of support and resistance, and that is a dark cloud cover candle. The uh, Let's go out to uh, Lou in Nashua, New Hampshire. Lou, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Yes. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, about natural gas, if it's too late to get into uh, uh, the uh, futures. 
Uh, if we take a look at uh, natural gas, so uh, uh, we're take, I'm taking a look at the uh, continuous uh, contract here for you, and you've got this little evening star reversal pattern that uh, formed on this uh, uh, on the continuous contract here on September 5th. So what you've got, Lou, is you've got some fairly significant resistance up at the 371-ish mark right now, trading out at 360. So the question is, is it too late to get in? You know, it's not too late to get in. In, but is it the best place for you to go ahead and take a position in it? I'm not certain just yet because the uh, this still could be forming a small A to B equals CD down. Uh, that, that cannot be your – I can't rule that pattern out here at all now on the uh, – albeit just a small one, that would uh, take price down probably to about the uh, – I don't know, the 334 to 341 level. My preference on this trade, if you're not in the trade, would be to see it actually break above. Are you in the trade? No. Yeah. I would rather see it break above the uh, resistance of that September 5th high out there uh, than uh, than try to get, or buy a pullback. And the pullback I would be looking at would be some kind of uh, either A to B equals CD down pattern that would complete or some type of Fibonacci retracement out there. Now, it does look strong. There's no question that uh, even though it's got some resistance overhead, it does look strong because it has not been able to even make a point three eight two retracement, which Lou would take it down to about three fifty three forty nine. So, I think that your better entries are either going to be lower price, such as about three thirty five, or a close above that evening star formation candle from September fifth out there, because that should then act as a resistance level, which is about three seventy two. It's going to have resistance on the way up. I don't know that natural gas right. Right now, unless it pulls back, that even trying to buy the breakout is really the best move because it's got resistance uh, right up here at the swing point of July 18th, and then it's got some additional resistance up here at June 19th. So you're better off to buy it. I would put the relative strength indicator on my uh, chart, and I would be waiting for the uh, 14 period to move down towards that uh, 30 level. Right now, Lou, it's at about 55.19. So you're, I, I just don't think you've got the right reward to risk in here. All righty? Okay. Gotcha. Hey, you bet you. Thanks so much for calling. Folks, let's see. Uh, moving in the markets here. Stratasys, Apple, and Tesla leading things down. You got Lululemon bouncing a little bit this morning. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com.
Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomento Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow up 29 points, trading out at 15.330. S&P up two at sixteen eighty five. The uh, Nasdaq composite up three and uh, about almost four bucks, trading out at thirty seven nineteen. Russell two thousand up a little over three bucks. A lead in the charge on the way up, up ten, trading out at ten fifty one. Apple down two fifty. Microsoft up uh, seven ticks. Google up a buck eighty five. Cisco up a nickel. Intel up fifty one cents. Intel having a nice morning out here. Not as nice as Ulta Salon U L T A. That's a ticker symbol. Up almost fourteen percent this morning. Wonder if they were out with uh, earnings out here. Let me see. See here, Alta Salon, their second quarter profit uh, topped their estimates. Let me see if I can find the numbers out here. Looks like operating income of seventy-two point nine million versus fifty-seven from the prior year out there. Second quarter uh, revenue six hundred one million versus four eighty-one. So uh, boy, they're having a nice morning out there. What a store to get lost in, you know. If you like uh, shampoos and stuff, Alta Salon is the uh, shop out there. You got United National Foods UNFI up a nice eight percent. This morning up five bucks and change. Uh, we've got uh, Regenerin Pharmaceuticals jumping in the lead here. They're up nine bucks. That's up about three uh, percent. Safeway Inc. I believe that's a, a grocery store. S W Y. They're up about six uh, percent. That's up a buck fifty one. Uh, NQ Mobile up seven percent this morning, up a buck forty. Uh, you got Michael Kors up uh, about two percent this morning. Sandisk up two percent, that's up a buck. This buds for you. Anheuser Busch is up a dollar, that is one percent. To the downside, Stratasys, one of the three D uh, systems out there, SSYS off about four bucks right now. Uh, that is down less than one percent out there. It uh, looks like they are pushing out some more stock. So all these three D companies taking advantage of. Uh, of the market at the moment. Uh, you got Apple pushing down Vertex Pharmaceuticals, VRTX, off 3% this morning. They're down 250 Tesla is off about 2 bucks, down 162 Under Armour, UA, off about a buck 30 here, down 5%, though. You got Arex, Approach Resources, uh, they're off a buck 34. That seems to be about the biggest percentage mover to the downside. Our call number is 877 927 6648. We're going to take a look here at the uh, currency market. So yesterday, we were taking a look at this 
little three drive to a bottom pattern that was forming right at the 10:30 time frame out here. That three. This is on the euro Japanese yen currency pair. That three drive to a pattern formed, completed, and of course what we saw was the euro Japanese yen move higher. Now what it did do, if we take a look at retracements, it got all the way back up to the top of the uh, th of the three drive pattern that occurred here at 4:30. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, and that is a significant reversal pattern. So we're seeing a bit of a retracement here this morning. Let's go measure that. Let's go from the low of that three drive pattern from 10:30 a.m. all the way yesterday, all the way up to the high that was put in here. It looks like at about 1:30, or we could use uh, yeah 1:30 uh, a.m. out at the price point of 1:32.63. Looks like it's going to move down to about the uh, 1:32.06 level, or perhaps the uh, point. Uh, perhaps it's already made its uh, move down out here. But what this looks to be doing is setting up an A to B equals CD up. Uh, with that three drive holding the way that it did, uh, with it doing the uh, first move, which it should have done. In fact, if we take a look at just simply, let me get rid of some of the retracements out here, make it a little bit easier for you to follow along. Let's do this. Let's take a look at the retracement that the uh, three drive pattern did form out here. Uh, again, we're looking at a 30-minute chart on the Euro Japanese yen, and it made, uh, you know, it didn't quite make get up to the point six one eight level, but it looks to me more like what is really forming here at the uh, moment is an A to B equals C D up. And if that is what is occurring, let's take a look at what that could look like here because the C point itself has not yet formed uh, or at least doesn't look like it has formed out here. So the A point, that was the bottom of the three drive. The B point, the high at 130 this morning. And that C point, you know, looks like probably maybe a bit lower where it would form. That would take price up to about the 132.93 level. I think we'll probably find that is a .786 retracement. Let's take a look at that, that would set up the next Gartley buy pattern right around the 133 level. And that's what, if you're bullish, that's what you want to see take place today. You want to see the Euro Japanese yen either begin to pull back just a little bit more or begin its reversal from here. But if we take a look at that RSI indicator on the bottom of my uh, screen, the red squiggly line, most certainly it could move a little bit lower before it gets in that oversold condition. And then if it starts the C to D leg, that'll give some energy into the uh, markets. That would suggest that the uh, markets would close up towards their session highs today, and that is on the uh, Euro Japanese yen. Again, the C point hasn't formed, and until that does, uh, all this is nothing more than uh, taking a look at a potential Right? That's how we take a look at any trade that we would put together. We take a look at what's the potential first and what are the patterns uh, that are out there. That was on the Euro Japanese Yen. That was on the intraday chart. If we take a look at the actual daily chart to see what it's doing, and it's important to be paying attention. Uh, to these uh, uh, to these uh, currency pairs here because they do rule the world. If we take a look at the daily chart for the Euro Japanese yen, we can see that that was pushing down into this wide ranging bar candle and it was breaking out and suggesting that it wants to either move up to a 1.272 or a 1.618 butterfly pattern. And that level held yesterday. We saw that on the 30 minute chart. Of course, the daily chart has more priority than the 30-minute chart, but the uh, daily chart is showing that it held a key area of support yesterday, and that happens to be the low of the September 10th candle out there at 131.90. If you see it close below that, well, then guess what? What we were taking a look at on the 30-minute chart, that also would suggest to me that that three drive to a pattern would fail, and that went then would suge suggest that we would see lower prices in the market. In fact, if you see divergence today, which is a break of this area, and our markets move higher, that's got to make you say, hmm, something to uh, think about, maybe even more than just something to think about. But right now, all looks good, and on the 30-minute chart, it's doing what it should do, which is pulling back to likely form a, a C point of an A to B equals CD up. Uh, let's go take a look here at LightSweet Crude and Bond, see what, in fact, they are doing out here. LightSweet Crude pulling back a bit today, but really, this thing has been traveling sideways for quite some time. Of course, it's really been traveling sideways since July the 5th in this little consolidation zone, which is from the lows of about 10, we'll call it 102.50 or so, up to about that 109.50 uh, level. So not really giving you anything significantly bearish or bullish. In fact, my opinion is this looks more bullish than bearish at the uh, moment. What we do see uh, as it has uh, moved into this consolidation area, we are seeing some higher lows, and we have seen some higher highs out here as well on the uh, daily chart. So light sweet crude yet 
not willing to give up the uh, ghost. Not until it probably gets to 114 or 116. If we take a look at the 30-year Treasury here, it still has not broken above the area that I would need it to to consider taking a long-term a, a, a trade, not a long-term trade, my goodness, a, a short-term trade to the long side of the uh, 30-year Treasury. I do believe we're going to see a pretty significant bounce out here. And uh, maybe that's going to come next week after Uncle Ben comes out and uh, does and the FOMC decides to do what it is that they're going to do. But I can tell you this much, and we'll, I'll know more today. Well, I'll know more tomorrow. I won't really take a look at the CFTC data after uh, 3. Oh, it's released today at 3.30, so one could uh, jump on board if you had all the data to see what, what the uh, commercials are doing and all, as well as take a look at the non-reportables out there. But the commercials... Folks say the big money uh, is uh, is uh, hedging, not hedging. They are they are stating clearly, unequivocally, just as they were in the case of uh, gold. Now you can't use it from a timing tool standpoint, but they are suggesting that we're going to see a significant bounce inside the uh, 30-year Treasury. Now, where will that bounce take us to? Well, the first area when in, should it occur? Now, I won't go long here at this stage because I haven't gotten a confirming signal. But where could it bounce to? Very easily come back and try to break inside the. Cons- consolidation level, which would be up in about the 135, and it's a long consolidation. It's a couple-year consolidation pattern out there that it had broken through. So that's what uh, that's what I'll be looking for over the weekend, just to pay attention uh, to uh, what is happening out there. Let's go take a look at some of these stocks here that are popping and dropping. I want to go take a look at Ulta Salon, see what it is doing out with nice numbers. They're leading uh, the uh, charge on the way up, up uh, 13 bucks and change. The ticker symbol is U-L-T-A. So let's go see what uh, uh, this is doing. Oh, how about that? It uh, let me refresh the chart here. But we had drawn in ahead of time a 1.272 butterfly uh, that it looked like it was ready to complete. But let me uh, see if I can update this chart here. Give it a moment to do that. Why isn't it doing that? Oh, as a matter of fact, it is. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Uh, it is, uh, uh, in fact, how about that? So if we take a look at this now, I just pulled up this chart on my screen out here. Uh, so uh, there was nothing that I actually typed in. But you can see when, uh, whenever I looked at this for whomever, whether it was for myself or maybe it was for a caller or something like that, what I had drawn in here was the likelihood of a pattern that this would complete, which was your 1.272 butterfly pattern. Well, guess what, folks? It gapped up into that this morning. Now, that would have completed at a price level of about 112.14. It's trading at 113.59 right now, but it has gapped up into it. If we take a look at volume so far, volume is 630,000 uh, uh, shares. Uh, that's pretty good because the last swing point at 781, and we're only a few minutes into the uh, trading session, 14 minutes in. So where is this headed to? Well, where this is headed to is higher price on Alta Salon. So if you are into Alta Salon, if you are holding Alta Salon, you've got your second uh, gap up here. I would be paying attention to make sure you don't get a three-gap play. But where this should now move to is very likely the 122, 123 area where it would form a point uh, a 1.618 butterfly pattern. Uh, that's what it is signaling to us today. That would also be your 1 to 1.618. A to B equals CD. So that is an Alta salon out there and that's about how you use some tools to draw some leading indicator patterns. Let's go check out Regenerant Pharmaceuticals. That is uh, up nice uh, 4% this morning, up 11 bucks and change. R-E-G-N is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, let's go see if that is taking out a, a swing point. Looks like it most certainly is going to attempt to do that. So Regenerant Pharmaceuticals, it's either going to form a triple top or it's going to take out an area of uh, resistance. That resistance being set up right here, this little bull, bear sash candle from May the uh, 5th. In Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, the high of that is 283.99. R-E-G, and let me just uh, do one other thing out here. And it also has this little uh, evening star formation uh, from July 22nd. So it's really up against, let's go ahead and draw a uh, line across the uh, chart out here. We'll use a, we'll use a uh, red line. Of course, you've got to be careful these days uh, when you mention the word red line, don't you? So we're going to use a red line anyways because this is an area of resistance, I would say, really right about there because you've got this little bear sash candle, this little Three River Evening Star formation out here, and prices above it. Now let's take a look at volumes. 855,000 shares the last time up on July 22nd. Uh, that is uh, going right now. It's done 192,000 shares in, what, about 16 minutes of uh, trading. So the easy math on that is it should have 
have the volume. If we take a look at the high, which is 283.99, it's up above that level. That's the bearish and uh, bear sash candle from uh, May 15th. That has volume of 844. So it looks like it's not going to be. Well, it depends on what it does here. If it fails today, failure would mean a uh, close back below uh, 283.99. Now. Just because it closes, if it were to close back below 283.99 and get below that swing point, it's going to have the volume. So it's not exactly the best triple top pattern that you would trade out here. And it looks more to me more likely that this is a real breakout. Now, where is this thing going to uh, break out to? Well, one of the things that we can see here inside of Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, you can see the uh, consolidation pattern that it has really been trading inside. So that's one way you could take the conservative approach. We could say that that's the consolidation. What I'll do is just simply go ahead and we'll measure that. I'll draw another one. We'll just add it to the uh, top of the uh, price. Let me uh, squish. Squish, I believe, is a, a technical tool term that we use here for us technical traders. That would say that your projected uh, level, if it can break out above this uh, resistance area, is 338.18. So if you are a, a trader that likes to play breakouts, well, guess what? You just got your get. looks like you're getting one here in Regenerate Pharmaceuticals. You would close out this trade here if it broke back into the consolidation range. I'm not suggesting you take it, but for those of you that like to play the continuation moves, uh, you know, this is it. Now, the problem that you've got here, if you take a look at that relative strength indicator out here, is you're up, up towards the overbought uh, condition level. But this is giving us every indication, Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, that it wants to go ahead and break out of this consolidation area and certainly above the two most recent bearish candles. Old resistance really should become new support. That's on Regenerate. Let's see, what do we have to the uh, downside out here? Uh, let's go take a look at uh, Showdown is where I try to put some of those uh, charts out there. Uh, that's the fresh market, but let's not take a look at the fresh market. Let's instead take a look at Stratasys, S-S-Y-S. They are the leader in the clubhouse to the uh, downside, gapping down with some volume uh, this morning. Uh, let's go see what it is uh, going to uh, try and uh, trade into. And volume so far, 2.8 million shares. But again, I believe they're floating some more stock. Isn't that it? Another up, uh, four and a half. What is this? Let me see here if I can widen this up just a bit see exactly what it is that they're doing so that's what's behind this so 4.5 million shares uh, today is what they're putting out in the uh, marketplace so that's really what is behind its move out here uh, stratasys and if we take a look at uh, this you know if anything it's trading right now into a, a sign of a uh, strength its last sign of strength which was on August the 8th, and the low there, 87.15 to 99.50. So I guess all in all, doesn't look too, too uh, shabby. doesn't look too bad out there. Right now, we've got the Dow is up 44. S&P is up 3. Folks, if you are participating in our TFNN virtual trading competition, first of all, congratulations to you. But make sure you place a trade today because you could be one of the five lucky winners that will put 100 bucks in their pocket. That would be a nice way to uh, end your Friday. Might uh, change your dinner plans. We'll be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly gold report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the gold report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex, up next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. That Dow's up 62 points right now, trading out at 15.363. S&P is up three and a half. And uh, we started out the week here. We're going to go take a look at the 120-minute chart here for the S&P futures. And I'm gonna, we're going to go take a look at a, a stock here that really has done the uh, same pattern. And just simply want to share this with you because that way uh, you can uh, utilize this pattern in your uh, trading. So we're taking a look at this descending price channel. We're looking at the uh, blue lines. In fact, I'll get rid of the retracement uh, levels right now. We'll just clean this chart up here on my uh, screen. So if you can take a look at the ES Mini, it was traveling in this very nice descending price channel out here. And what we saw, in fact, I think it might have even, it was last Friday. I know it was last Friday, uh, Jobs Friday. As we came into that 930 session, uh, we saw price break out above that level. Now, when you break out above a, a trend line, a channel line, or what have you. And this is a break because price was in a downtrend channel out here. If price was uh, breaking to the downside, it was already headed down, that wouldn't be a break. But in this case here, we had price moving lower. So as the top of this descending price channel was broken, which it did at 9.30 on Friday, a week ago today, that was suggesting you. To, that was that was suggesting hmm something to uh, really think about here. Now, when you break a trend line, you like to see it come back and test it at least uh, three times out there to confirm that the uh, break is real. Well, you got that next test. This 120 minute chart. You got that test at 11:30. In fact, I think I need to update this because that's when we had uh, good old uh, uh, Putin come out and uh, say, you know, he's ready to take on the U.S. Uh, just to uh, go ahead and back Syria. I don't know if this will should update and we could see the uh, punch down. Uh, through there, and uh, that went ahead, and that sent uh, markets uh, lower, creaming lower. But the bulls really stepped in; they pushed price back above. There we go. We can see that. Uh, we can see the long, long wick inside that uh, candle at 11:30 uh, session out here. So that was your first test. We saw a couple more tests. We saw it actually close, not at four o'clock, but between four and 4:15. We saw it actually close back underneath that trend line. Well, when we came back in on a Sunday evening. 
uh, price quickly got above it. We saw one, two more tests of that area coming into about 10.30, 11, uh, 30 in the evening on uh, Sunday, and then, ba-boom, a move up. And what we also saw here, folks, we also saw a golden cross. We saw the 50-day, that's the blue squiggly line, move above the 200-period exponential moving average, and that is uh, one of the signals that this market was going to break out. Now, break out to where? You know, we've seen this saying, if we take a look at it, where the likely breakout to is going to be is 10 Testing the July, uh, the July, the uh, August uh, second highs out there, right around the 1705 level. If we do take a look at the retracements from the high down to the uh, low out here, you can see it hit the 0.786 level, a normal place to drop some folks off of the elevators out there. And uh, 1680, it's right around 1688. Now I'm going to switch over real quickly because I've got a minute, uh, and I belabored that point. But if we do take a look at a stock here that is also breaking out today here, and that is United. National Foods. But take a look at this pattern. Now, I just pulled this chart up. I had this already in the system. I didn't redraw anything. But you can see it's descending price channel. And uh, this equity here uh, broke out of the descending price channel on the uh, 14th of May, take a look at price got up a little bit higher. It did what it should do, 100% move of a move, a normal area of resistance, getting back to the February 13th level. Came back, tested it, got back inside it, rejected it with a nice uh, wide-ranging bar. That was on June 13th. Came back and tested it two more times right here before it finally broke out on June 24th as the market was moving higher as well. And now today it's taking out a B point with volume of an A to B equals CD up. That B point was August 14th. That had 91,000 shares. The high there was 62.95. It's already done 420,000 shares. So this thing is breaking out with volume. Looks like it's at all-time highs, uh, setting up another A to B equals CD pattern. Yeah, big time out there. And that is on United National Foods. Stay tuned, folks, for the uh, Nadex Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. If you're off to start your Friday, have a fantastic day, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you Monday morning. Take care, folks. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.